Tonight I want to speak about the Ebeka Basaratova. The Ebeka, the eternal good news. The eternal gospel. There is a gospel that is eternal. And in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, there's an angel flying in mid-heaven with an eternal gospel to proclaim. And that's the gospel that we are proclaiming. It is eternal because it's about an eternal person who was eternal before he came to this world. And he did uh, acts that could only be done by someone such as himself. And then he proved himself eternal by standing up from the grave. And then he went back to the eternal heaven where he came from, having preached an eternal gospel. He is alive. Hallelujah. And in this chapter, chapter 14, you see people, and what are they doing? Hallelujah. What are they doing? They are playing. Harpenspieler is a person who plays the harp, the Nevel, the harp. In the rabbi from Tarsus, Paul has a harp. And you can see this harp throughout his imprisonment. He is in agony. He is preparing for dying al Kiddish Hashem. He is finishing, completing the dictation of the last of his work. He has betrayal and, and demonic attack going on. We see the struggles of this man. But even in prison, he can worship God like he did when he sang hymns with Silas in the jail in Philippi. And here he has a harp. And he is depicted as a harpenspieler, a harp player. That's a Yiddish word. And that's what he's going to be doing in heaven. Because he is also one of the Hasidim, one of the zealous, pious Jews. And he is himself a picture of the 144,000. He fits the description. He has followed the Lamb wherever the Lamb goes. And now, in Revelation chapter 14, verse 2, it says, And I heard a sound out of Shemaim, as a sound of Maim Rabim, many waters, and as a sound of Ra'am Gadol, loud thunder. And the sound which I heard was as of players of the Nivelle, of the harp, playing on their nivelim, their harps. And these harp players have a tranquil, glorious joy. All their struggles are behind them. There is no fear. And they don't worry about tomorrow because they have a trillion, billion tomorrows ahead of them. They have an eternal future. And this is why he came, to restore Gan Eden and the Etz Chaim that was lost. And it was not God's will that any should perish. And God wanted to bring Chaye Olam to the whole world. So he brought a living Savior. Now you know 
that Boaz, who uh, is the goal redeemer in the book of Ruth, he's alive. He's able to purchase the bride. He's able to do everything that needed to be done for the living and the dead. Because he is a living Savior. He is a picture of the Moshiach ben Dovid who is coming. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. Who will come roaring out from the grave and send his Shalahim to the ends of the earth to preach an everlasting gospel. Mm. That's what we're preaching. Hallelujah. And that's what my eyes are on right now because I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about it. You see, you have to understand that there is a death penalty, that people are worthy of death. You say, oh, no, not my pious uncle. He was a tzaddik. I've never seen such a pure, pure man. He was not worthy of death. But the Bible says, Havye Mise, the desert, the deserving, the obligation, the debt of death. These are the things that man has done which makes him worthy of death. He has broken the Aseris Hadebros. And you have to see this, that the Aseris Hadebros are not just ten suggestions, but they are death penalty with covenant reprisal commandments. Uh, the Shabbos breaker is, is put to death. Exodus 31. The uh, obdurate son is uh, put to death Deuteronomy 21 and Exodus 21 the one that committed, committed uh, premeditated murder Exodus 21 put to death you murdered somebody you're going to be murdered the sexual sins of the seventh commandment Leviticus 20 these carry death penalties or theft like uh, stealing a soul, a kidnapping, there is definitely a death penalty, Exodus 21, 16. Or perjury, uh, Deuteronomy 19. And even the spies, the ten of them that came back with a lying report that said, oh no, God won't give us this land. The giants are too tall. The walls are, are too tall. We can't uh, go in. Uh, God, God is going to uh, uh, let us die here in the wilderness uh, if if we uh, disobey this ninth commandment. And that's exactly what happened uh, because uh, they were lying spies. Uh, remember the tenth commandment. There was death for coveting. Remember Achan. He coveted, coveted that which was harem. So these commandments require a substitute. The ram had to die so that Yitzhak, who had his Akedah, could be set free. It is, it is blood for your blood. It is a soul for your soul. It is a korban for your salvation. That you could be set free. That you could be redeemed. And in the beginning of Romans, Rav Shaul lays out an indictment. He wants to show the fallenness of humanity. You might think, well... Uh, people are not that bad, are they? But when you when you go when you go to this uh, this passage, you see he tells you he's a shaliach set apart 
the for the Bosiris Tova of Hashem, hmm. which Hashem had from before said through his Nevi'im in the Kitve HaKodesh about his Zutfunderoibishter who is born of the Zerah Dovid according to the flesh but decisively shown to be the Zunfunderoibishter with power with Macht according to the spirit of holiness through the standing up again from the dead he stood up again he stood up he was put to death then he stood up again from the dead from the toita the dead we're talking about the namesake of that one, that Yeshua ben Yehotzadak, the high priest, that Zahariah came up to him and said, your name, Yehoshua, Yeshua, is the Tzemach, the coming Moshiach. And he did come. About 500 years later, he arrived, and the angel told the uh, uh, Miriam Badovid, give him this name. She told, she the, he was actually named by Yosef ben Dovid. These two have Davidic blood from David through Shlomo or Natan. And this is the name. There is no other name under heaven. This is the name that the name under which we must be saved. There is no other name that we can call upon. The other day I was talking to the uh, to the people on down at 1410 Coney Island Avenue down at, at, on uh, um, Yom Harishon Beth Shalom and there they were sitting there and I said now if you can imagine I go down to the to the beach and there is a, a lifeguard we'll call him Joshua and I say, hi, Joshua, how are things today? And then I go and jump in the water. Now, let's say I get out too far and I get a cramp and I start going under. I'm not going to cry out, Islam. I'm not going to cry out, Christianity. I'm not going to cry out, Yeshua or uh, uh, Judaism. Uh, I'm going to cry out, Joshua. And, you know, Joshua is the, is the, um, the name of... Yeshua in English, Yehoshua, I'm going to cry out, Yeshua, save me. Because salvation is something personal. It, it's not, it's not a, a, a religious thing. You need a living Savior who's alive to swim out there and save you. If he's dead and buried, he can't save anybody, even himself. This is axiomatic. It should be obvious. And he was risen from the dead. Hallelujah. He is Ha'adon, Adonainu. Uh, how? Why? Because he overcame death. He's not a prophet only. Prophets are in the cemetery. This prophet came out of the cemetery. That makes him the Lord. And through him we, we have received chesed and the shlichus to the obedience of the of the emunah among all peoples through his name not menachem his name yahushua yeshua among which also you are called of yeshua hamashiach yahushua hamashiach to all who are in Rome, beloved of Hashem, called to be saints, holy ones, Kadashim. Hesed to you and Shalom from Hashem, Aroneinu, 
uh, our Father, Avinu, and from Adonainu, Yeshua HaMashiach. Code of Call. First of all, I give up praise to my God through my Mashiach, Yahushua, Yeshua HaMashiach, for you, for you all, because over your faith, your Emunah, is spoken in the whole world. People all over the world are talking about the faith of the city of Rome, which is the capital of the Roman Empire, and all roads lead there. And if there's faith there, it's news that the whole world is talking about. For Hashem, whom I serve in my spirit, in the Basaris Tova of his Zunfudoibishter, he is my, this, this, uh, God of mine, Hashem, is my witness, my aidus, that I remember you without stopping in my tefillahs, in my prayers, asking once for all that it may be, that, that it may, that we might succeed, uh, im yutsa, You'd say Hashem, if, if the Lord wills, to come to you. He's saying, I want to come to you. This is what I'm praying for. And of course, he does come to him in a spectacular He comes to the Romans in a spectacular way. You have to read the book of Acts to see how it happened. It was miraculous. God answered his prayers exceedingly abundantly more than he could ask or think. For my desire is to see you, to, to give over something to you, a spiritual gift, we're talking about a spiritual gift to strengthen you for your strengthening. By this I mean that I may be comforted in you through the mutual faith, yours and mine. It's going to build me up too, he's saying. And I want I don't want, brothers, for you to be uninformed that often I have already, I've wanted to come to you, and until now I've been prevented so that I may have some fruit also among you as among the other peoples. Because he is a, the shaliach to the nations. And in verse 14 he says, I am a debtor, you know, I have a debt, and I own that debt, it, it's mine, and I, I have to pay it to Greeks and to barbarians, non-Greek non speaking people, to wise ones and to fools, so then I am ready according to the opportunity to proclaim the Basaris Tova also to you. We're talking about the eternal gospel in Rome. He wants to go there and preach to them in Italy. For I am not embarrassed with the Basaris Tova. He knew it was dangerous. Hallelujah. Because this is the good news of the Moshiach, and I'm not embarrassed about it. I'm not ashamed of it. Because it is Hashem's power, His Gevura, to Yeshua's Elokeinu, for everyone who believes. The Jewish person, first of all, and also the Greek. For in it, is the righteousness of Hashem revealed from faith to faith. As it stands written, the righteous, the tzaddik, will through his faith live. 
Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Mm. For God's wrath, and notice he's talking about the fury of God. Why was the temple built? Why were all those animals sacrificed? Why were the Kohanim always bringing an animal forward? Why did Abraham take a ram? Why, why was that ram necessary for the salvation of Yitzhak? Why was the temple uh, a place of blood where a separate sewer system had to be set up so that the blood from hundreds of animals could be drained away from the floor where it was uh, given kosher uh, 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 butcher from the Kohanim. Uh, why was all that there? Because God's wrath mm -hmm. had to be propitiated. And it was the blood. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The angel of death will pass over you. It was the blood on the, on the threshold. It was the lamb's blood that got the Jewish people out. And there was a lamb slaughtered constantly in the temple. And why? Because the wrath of God had to be propitiated. Uh, and this is revealed from heaven. Because this wrath is on all wickedness and iniquity of people who hold down the truth in unrighteousness. The, the, the thing that needs to be heard is always being quenched and pushed back and censored and held at bay. And this is why God's wrath is growing. Because the unrighteousness that holds the, the truth down ignites the wrath of God. Because although they knew Hashem, uh, because he had made himself known to them, for, for Hashem had revealed uh, himself to them, by what? The invisible things. Uh, uh, you know, since the creation of the world, the, the creation of all created things, namely the Abaka power and deity, this was manifest. You look up into the sky, you see the stars. You see the eternal power and deity of God. So if you want to not believe in God and be an atheist, you have to try to suppress what is plainly before your eyes. And you can know God. You, you do know God, but, you, but you're trying to suppress the knowledge of God as an atheist. And this, this is so that they may be without excuse. There's a word to roots. It means excuse. Because God has made himself known. Therefore they are, they are without excuse. And on, on account of the fact that they know Hashem. But they have not glorified him as Hashem. Or, or given him thanks or been thankful uh, to him. But instead they're their senseless minds have been uh, hardened or darkened and uh, thinking that they are wise they have actually become fools and they exchanged the herlikite the glory of the immortal God with the likeness of the form of a mortal man uh, putting their eyes on a man, a, a mere mortal man, a dead, a dying mortal man. This is what's going on in Crown Heights. The man is dead. But they're making an idol out of him, and that's what we do. They, These people, these uh, musicians are actually called idols. They're called rock idols, or there's 
movie star idols. We take a mortal man and we turn him into something more. And uh, therefore, Hashem has handed them over in the lust of their hearts to the filthiness, to, to, to shaming their bodies among themselves, which have exchanged the truth of Hashem with a sheker, a, a lie, and honor and serve the created instead of the Beshefer, the Holy One, blessed be He forever, Amen. And on account of this, the Hashem has given them over to shameful lusts because their, their women have exchanged the natural use with an unnatural and in this way also the men deserting the natural and, and you know you think of a deserter uh, deserting the army here you have someone deserting their own gender their own natural use their own natural uh, personhood and what are they doing it says also the men deserting the natural use of the wife have have desired in themselves and gotten heated up one with the other men with men doing worthless meanness it says in the Yiddish and have acquired in themselves the appropriate reward or the connected reward of their misleadings and since they have not wanted to have Hashem in their knowledge Hashem has handed them over to vile understanding to do that which one does not do they are filled they have become filled with every wickedness, fornication, evil doing, greediness, malice, envy, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, craftiness, slander, defamers, enemies of Hashem, impudent or imp impertinent, impudent faces, fresh, Im impudent, braggart, projectors of evil they project evil wherever they go disobedient to parents think about Putin getting up every morning and projecting evil projecting it and even over the whole nation of Ukraine foolish without understanding unfaithful treacherous without natural feelings unmerciful which although they know God's mishpat his his judgment his holy judgment as de vos ton di dozica that that they who do these things deserve the death penalty mishpat mavet they deserve death and they not only do them but they they applaud those who do them and this is the terrible uh, thing that Paul starts out his gospel with we are in trouble we are sinners we are incarcerated getting ready to come before the judge for sentencing but here's the glorious thing that is in Judaism but is has been lost by the traditions of men Judaism has a scapegoat and that scapegoat is none other than Moshiach ben David who Nasa he carries away like the scapegoat of Leviticus 16 
He carries away all of our iniquities, all of our sins, crying out for punishment. He takes them. He who knew no sin becomes a sin offering for us, and he carries that sin outside the camp. He carries that sin away so that we might be free from it, so that we might be redeemed, that we might be released from it. And this is very, very important for you to see this. And, uh, you know, I want to thank God that um, we are loosed or released or, or set free uh, from the dominion of Hasatan, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26. And the curse of the Torah, uh, you know, the, the last verse in Deuteronomy 27, uh, Galatians 3.13 says, uh, the curse of the Torah, uh, the Torah that you did not keep, that you did not uphold all the words of this Torah to do it, that curse he took for us. Cursed is everyone who's hanged on a tree. And and we are loosed, we are released by his blood. And it is his blood that saves us. And so uh, here we have the, um, the rabbi from Tarsus movie. You should go to Google and type the rabbi from Tarsus full movie and watch this movie, which is a dramatization of 2 Timothy. And you will see Paul playing his harp. And in Revelation chapter 14, hallelujah, we see the harpenspielers. They're playing their harps. And one day, my friend, you will have a harp and you will be a harpenspieler. That's the Yiddish word for a harpist. Harpenspieler. And you will be playing the harp in heaven. And you will have a million, jillion tomorrows in front of you. The future will go on forever. There's no sorrow. There's no sighing. There's no death. There's no fear. There's, no, there's nothing such as we see in this world. Because this is what Moshiach came to give us. And what he experienced himself when he stood up alive. And this is what he said to the Ganav. Today you will be with me in Gan Eden. Today you will have this glorious eternal gospel fulfilled in your life. And you will have everlasting life. You will have eternal life. Father, I want to pray today that people will watch this video and understand they need a lawyer. They are in trouble. They've been arrested. They've been taken down to the police station. The police have said, look, we have the goods on you. We know exactly what you did. We have your DNA. We have your fingerprints. We know that you are the perpetrator. And we're going to give you to the district attorney. And he is going to throw the book at you. And in this state, that means the death penalty. And so after the jury has come back and you are condemned you will be brought out of the cell and brought before the judge and he will pronounce the death penalty and you will go to that death chamber sooner or later you will enter that death chamber you will be on death row waiting and there will be no help for you. The clemency that you're looking for, you will not get. The appeals will not work. Death is what is coming to you. Death. And when they put those lethal injection needles in your arm and the fluid starts coming down the tube and you begin to lose consciousness and everything turns black, you will see this is where the Torah got you. Because the Torah is a picture of the wrath of God. It re it's revealed from heaven. It's revealed from Sinai. The people didn't even want to go to the 
they would they wouldn't they didn't want to go they said we need a mediator we need Moses Moshe Rabbeinu to go up there and get the Aseris Hadabros we don't want to go up there we know that the Torah from heaven the wrath of God is revealed there and the the curse of the Torah uh, is death and we are in trouble when that when you come to that point you will realize that you need a savior you need a substitute you need someone to intervene and take this judgment for you and the glorious thing is that when Moshiach died and said it is finished and he gave up his spirit that means that the chastisement that brought us peace was upon him now we can preach the good news because Avshalom ben Dovid is pierced and hanging on the tree and the Mavaser can run with the good news hallelujah this is wonderful all my sins have been paid for you say yes when a convict comes out of prison he says I paid my debt to society well I didn't pay it Mashiach Ben Dovid paid it it was paid not with silver and gold but with the incorruptible and imperishable Korban Pesach the, the atonement the the uh, the cor the uh, Kapora uh, yes, it's in Romans chapter 3, verse 25. The Kippura, the blood on the Kippuras Aron Kodesh, on Yom Kippur, it was paid. I can walk out a free man. My sins have been paid for. And more than that, he stood up alive, which means he stood up for my justification he stood up and I stand up with him in his resurrection it says in Hosea chapter 6 that in his resurrection we stand up with him on the third day he will raise us up so I've been raised up and now I must keep my mind in heavenly places because I have died through him vicariously in his death I died because he died for me he became my proxy when when he took my sins it was me taking those sins or I should say him taking them for me as my proxy my Tamara he took them he paid for them he died therefore I died so it is no longer I who live because I died but the life I now live I live with the Zunpund Reubister who gave himself for me and raised me up I became a new creature old things passed away I was regenerated I had a new birth I became a new person and now I'm walking in a spiritually resurrected uh, condition with him and he is leading me all the way to glory this is the, the good news this is the eternal gospel this is what we are preaching to the whole world this is the glory that God wants you to know about father I pray right now that somebody will receive Moshiach Ben Dovid today that they will see this indictment in Romans chapter 1, that they will see it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a holy God. Without holiness, no one will see God. It's appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment, and they will see they need a Savior. They need Him. Hallelujah. Somebody has to pay for our sins. In the in the uh, Tanakh we find the bull comes forward to save the scapegoat comes forward to pay the lamb comes forward 
we are released and uh, set free from bondage only if someone comes forward to say to to pay and of course that is a foreshadow of the one who would come forward to pay and to save us and we thank you for him Lord yes Lord. and we ask Lord that people would see the antitype of Moshiach ben David in all the typology of the sacrifices of the Tanakh and we'll give you all the praise for this. We'll give you all the glory. Yeshua, come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Take control of my life. Lead me to the mikvah. Let me go under and be clean. Not by the water only. No, the water can't clean, cleanse me, really. I need the blood. The blood. The blood Hallelujah. of Moshiach Bendova. 